guys, welcome to this short video on colposcopy transformation zones. Now colposcopy is quite a difficult topic as most of you, just like me, don't actually do colposcopy yourselves, but you do need to know a bit before you do your MRCOG part two. So here's a quick burst for all of you about colposcopy transformation zones. Now just remember that colposcopy is going to be done for a variety of different reasons. And here are three situations where someone might do a fresh colposcopy on someone that's never had one before. The first one might be that a clinician colleague has found a suspicious looking cervix at speculum examination. And really what the colposcopy is there to do is to just have a closer look at the cervix. The second situation would be when a smear shows borderline nuclear changes or just mild dyscariosis. And when we've done HPV triage, this has shown high risk HPV. The last situation is when a smear test shows moderate or severe dyscariosis or high grade dyscariosis. So the whole point of colposcopy is to look for precancerous cervical disease and treat it so it never becomes cancer. Now colposcopists are looking for something in particular when they do their colposcopy and that is at the transformation zone so that they can then apply their acetic acid and iodine so that they can look and identify CIN. So just to remind you, the transformation zone is where the columnar epithelium, epithelium metaplases into squamous epithelium, the so-called SCJ. So the transformation zone can be type 1, type 2 or type 3. So the type 1 transformation zone is where the TZ is on the exocervix, as you can see here in the blue pen. Now a good thing about a type 1 transformation zone is that the colposcopist is going to find it really easy to have a look at that SCJ, that, that transformation zone, to apply that acetic acid and that iodine. A type 2 transformation zone is where partially the transformation zone is on the exocervix, but it's also on the endocervix, so denoted by the blue pen on this middle panel. So actually the colposcopists can still see the squamocolumnar junction, but can't see the entirety of the transformation zone. Lastly, for type 3 transformation zones, these are the most tricky for the colposcopists because the squamocolumnar junction is not visible as the whole of the transformation zone is within the endocervix. So the difficulty with type 3s is when treating, the colposcopist will want to remove the entire part of the transformation zone and therefore the whole of the SCJ for the pathologist to have a good closer look at. Now, taking to this panel down at the bottom, things that are going to promote a type 1 transformation zones are when a woman has a high estrogen state. So, like when they're taking combined oral contraceptive pill, or if they're pregnant, or if they're just having regular periods without any hormonal manipulation. Just think about that woman that you see in triage with an ectropion. When women are taking progesterone medications, or they're menopausal, that's when the transformation zone will actually retract into the end of the cervix and therefore promote a type 3 transformation zone. Okay, so that was a quick run through on transformation zones and colposcopy. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Have a look at our other ACE MRCOG videos for more. Bye for now. <laughs>